Hey, what's going on? Um, the Lord's been really speaking to me about faith this morning. Um, the devil has really been attacking my faith over the last couple of days. And um, I'm just going to read some passages that he led me to. Hebrews 11, 1 through 2. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. And really, you know, that's what we're striving for is um, to have the testimony. I remember a few years ago when I, well, maybe it was like a year and a half ago, I started this walk with Christ. And the thing I was, I was praying for a, a, a miracle. A, I, have, I was not in a very good place and I, I wanted to have a testimony that could testify to the fact that God is in the business of miracles, that he does do wonderful things for people in their lives, uh, something that would turn people to God, that would make them see that he is real and he does work in people's lives. And so I started praying for that a long time ago. Um, the one who sows to please his flesh from the flesh will reap destruction, but the one who sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not grow weary and well-doing, for in due time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to the family of faith. That's Galatians 6, 8-10. through 10. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. That's 1 Peter 5, 10. God led me to that verse a few days ago. Um, just reiterating and re-establishing um, my faith in him. He was just trying to show me that um, even though I have faced many trials and um, been through so much that he is still doing what he said he was going to do, that he is still coming through on his word. Um, hello, YouTube family. <laughs> um I mean, so far, I have been standing in my faith, unshakable, almost. I mean, for the better, better part of the last few months, at least. Um, it's difficult to say when I really was steadfast on my faith. The... Lord has worked so many miracles in my life that um, I, I knew that the thing that he spoke to me personally, the prophecy that he spoke to me over my life, I knew it would come to pass because of the things that he had already been working in my life that had been coming to pass. Even when I was... Um, I don't know what to call it. When I was um, not 100% following Jesus Christ, when I was still into new age, God was still working miracles in my life. Unbelievable things that there just was no explanation for, except it was him. He um, somehow worked out having 11 months of rent paid. Um, I lived at this house for like three years and I didn't pay any rent while I lived there while during COVID. I mean, I couldn't work and, um, I didn't have a car. I mean, it did at one point, but it, uh, caught fire. <laughs> My son stole it. I told him not to drive it, and he took the keys when I was sleeping. Went to go see his girlfriend. Brought it back. It was on fire. Had to call the fire department. Yeah, that happened. Never had a car again after that. Oh, no, I did get another car after that. I prayed for a car, and uh, this man came and backed into our driveway, which was pretty much the Grand Canyon, and had a dump truck full of like river pebbles. And he was like 
do you guys mind if I like dump this off here? I'm tired of waiting for the customers to show up to the property over there. And we were like, yeah, because I mean, there was a crater in our driveway. And so this guy like backed in and dumps out like $5,000 worth of pebbles to fill in our driveway. And I just screamed, I'm getting a car. And like two weeks later, I, I got a Toyota 4Runner. Um, but I was, because I had, I had got a income tax check. And so I had that money. It was burning a hole in my pocket. And I had enough faith to believe that God was going to answer my prayer. But I didn't understand how God works. So um, I didn't wait for him to lead me to the car. I just took the first person that would let me buy a car from them. <laughs> I, <laughs> um, now I know better that when God gives you something, it's good and no sorrow comes with it. <laughs> but yeah, that guy came and picked up that car a couple weeks after I gave him $2,000. He just came and took it. I got, um, I almost said a cuss word there. Sorry. Still shedding the old, um, I'm a, it's a work in progress. I'm not going to lie. I'm working very wholeheartedly. Um, so, this morning God was really speaking to me about faith and he led me to Hebrews. And I was just amazed because I had been thinking about all the stories in the Bible um, where there was just remarkable faith shown through the people, Abraham and Sarah, Enoch, that was just taken up to the Lord, you know, because he had amazing faith. Um, Noah built the ark because um, God showed him the things that were to come, and he just built this gigantic ark and put two by two by two, you know, two of every kind of animal on this huge ark when everybody was calling him crazy. Just because his faith and fear of God. That is amazing. Um, there's so many stories in the Bible. And in Hebrews, it talks about this. Um, and so I read all of that this morning. It's like, it's Hebrews um, 10, chapters 10 and 11. Let me turn to it real quick. Let me see. Luke, use the false. Use the false Luke by Hebrews. <laughs> okay, so um, Hebrews 10.23 says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who is who promised is faithful. Not only is he who promised faithful to us, he is a faithful father. But we have to have the faith in him to believe that he will be faithful back unto us. Faith is a huge part of it. Um, Ephesians 3.20 says, Exceedingly and abundantly above anything you can ask, think, or imagine, according to the belief within you. That is the faith. God will bring you whatever it is you need. I mean, it says, Ask and it shall be given unto you. But it's according to the faith, the belief that you have in you. If you believe that God is going to do something for you, it will happen. And when God speaks a word to you, you've got to hold on to that word. Because God is not a man that he should, should lie. He will always carry out his word. When he sends out a word, it goes out and it completes. And it goes out to perform that which it was sent for. It does not go back to him void. It does not fall flat on the floor. He is not a liar. Us saying that, that we don't believe that God is going to come through is like calling him a liar. And that, that's just blasphemy. And it's not, that's just not true. That's, that's the devil getting into your head and telling you that God is not going to do what, what he said he was going to do. But that's just not true. The devil is a liar. He comes for one reason, and that is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And he will do whatever it takes to bring you down. You will be right up to the last second before you receive a blessing, before you receive something in your life. And he will be in your head and on you. Trying to make you think that it's not going to come. And that is how he gets you to forfeit or delay. 
forfeit is not really a good word because when God pro prophesies something over your life, it happens. It just means that it gets delayed more. If you, if you give up or, um, let's say if, let's say if he's all in your head and then you're just like, I can't do this anymore and blah, blah, blah. And so you go back to doing things that you used to do, right? God is not going to forfeit the thing that he spoke to you, but he's going to use that situation to build you up some more. Cause obviously you're not ready to receive whatever it is that God is bringing to you. So he's going to take that situation and turn it around for your favor, right? Everything works together for the good of those that love God and are called according to his purpose. Even when we mess up really bad, even when you mess everything up, when it seems like you've messed everything up, he will use it to rebuild that foundation that is unshakable in your faith in Jesus Christ. So don't ever believe the liar, the devil. Don't believe those thoughts that he is sending to you because they are not true. It's not true. The devil is a liar. You've got to hold fast in your faith. In Jesus Christ, God always performs his word. Always. It may take him 20 years, but it's not his fault. We have to be obedient in our walk with Christ. There is a plan for our life. Yes, we are destined for things. But we are given this wonderful gift of free will. We get tempted by Satan, not God. Okay, God does not tempt people. Satan comes and tempts us. God gives us the, a wonderful gift of free will. We get to decide whether or not we're going to feed into this temptation, right? The reason why God gives us this free will is because he wants us to choose to have faith in him. He wants us to choose to love him to obey him, to do what he's asking him, us to do. Because when you choose to love something, it is so incredibly powerful. It is so incredibly powerful. If you're just made to love something, or you're loving someone or something just because other people are liking it or loving it, there's nothing backing. There's no emotion to it. There's nothing there. There's no backing to it. But when you choose out of, out of the wholeness of your heart to, to do something because you love it, it's, it, it's incredibly powerful. It fuels the fire inside of you. So I want you all to just keep that in mind. If, you, if you're at that place where the devil is attacking you and you're in that season or even if whatever, it doesn't really matter what season you're in. It takes faith throughout your entire walk with Christ to keep believing, to keep pushing forward. Just know that um, if you don't give up, the reward is great. And I'm not talking about cars and money and, and houses and all this stuff. I'm talking about the spiritual benefits. When the Bible talks about blessings, it's really talking about the spiritual side of things. It's, a, it's about deliverance from your generational curses. It's about deliverance from all the demonic things that have been following you around all these years. The reason why you're sad and depressed and broke down and disgusted, God delivers you from all of that. He gives you peace that, that surpasses all understanding. And I can testify to that because I was stuck in my car in Louisiana. It broke down. I was on my way somewhere. And I, I had to, I was living out of my car. I was stuck in the Walmart parking lot in Louisiana, never been there before for three weeks. But do you know that from the day I got there, I had the most supernatural amount of peace and joy that I've ever had in my life. I was walking around, just talking to people, singing prayer and worship songs in the parking lot, just I mean, belting it out. People were coming up to me crying with tears rolling down their face. I mean, I was 
uh, cut it up with people at the Starbucks and the Walmart every single day. Everybody knew my name. I mean, in the, in the whole area right there. I mean, I was just ministering to people. It was amazing. It was amazing. And I was like, it was so good. I could feel the presence of the Lord so much. I was just like, Lord, I, if, if you could just stay with me like this, um, I, I just, I don't mind if I just live in, in the backseat of my car forever. If you just stay with me, I mean, this is, this is pretty good. I like this. I mean, I'm not kidding. And that, that's how amazing it was. I'm not kidding. Jesus is real. His presence is unbelievable. Just keep the faith. Keep holding in there. Don't give in. Never quit. Never quit. Keep holding on. Do what God tells you to do. Be obedient. Try to. It's hard. It's really hard. I know. It's really hard. But it's a personal walk. You got to go to him and figure it out. Nobody can really tell you how to like navigate all this spiritual stuff because everybody's life is so different and we're on such different paths. Like we all have such different, you know, though we all have similar types of issues and stories, the, the, how personal it is to each one of us. And, and at the time, you know, the times that it's all happening, you know, so, I mean, like this YouTube family has been extremely helpful for me. I, I, I mean, I, don't, I didn't have anybody in my life that I could talk to. And I knew that I'm totally against Western medicine. I don't take any drugs, any medications. I'm completely against any of that stuff. So I don't believe in, I mean, you, you know, you're entitled to whatever, but I don't believe in, in a psychiatrist. I don't be, I believe that Jesus is the counselor. He is the healer. He can do anything. He can heal, heal all of your mental issues, all of your spiritual issues, all of your physical issues. And when he's done with all of that, then he rewards you for being obedient and listening to him. Do you know what you get for being obedient? You get healing. You get freedom. You get mental health. That right there is astronomical. I mean, that alone, without any monetary value on anything, that alone would set you for life. Good health, spiritual freedom in Christ, and good mental health. Having peace that passes all understanding and supernatural joy? That right there would be enough. Anyways, none of that was on my thing. But I am going to read a couple more verses to y'all because I wanted to um, tie this in a little bit. Uh, let me see. Um, I don't, maybe not. <laughs> I, I thought it was interesting. I was looking, I was going somewhere with that. Uh, Acts 2.22 says, Men of Israel, listen to these words. Jesus the Nazarene, a man attested to you by God with miracles and wonders and signs, which God performed through him in your midst, just as you yourselves know. Um, signs, wonders, and miracles. God shows us these things so that we have a reverent fear of him. Not only that, but it's so that we will know that he is going to do what he will do. So throughout your walk, he is showing you signs, showing you miracles, showing you wonders, and telling you prophecies so that when your big prophecy or when that big thing comes in your life that he told you about comes to pass or it hasn't come to pass yet, it's so that you have the faith to keep holding on and believing he will keep showing you little miracles along the way, little signs, wonders. He will start working in your life. He will develop your spiritual gifts. These are all to um, help you and edify you and keep going, keep your faith going in him. Um, we have just, we have something. Yep. The Holy spirit is sent as our helper. John 14, 26. I was on a fast with some girls, um, rem, uh, remnant rising, rising remnant. I think it's remnant, remnant rising. Anyway, she's wonderful. 
I've done two fasts, a uh, corporate fast with um, this young lady, and they both, both of these fasts were extremely beneficial for me. I br- had some major spiritual breakthrough in both of these fasts. And on the last one, um, she's very prophetic. She gave me, I mean, she gave us a verse that God said that we could declare over our dreams if we couldn't remember our dreams. I have not been able to remember my dreams for like a year and a half. It's been really frustrating. I've tried everything. And that night I tried declaring, it was John 14, 26, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to you, bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. So that night um, when she said that, I did that right before I went to sleep, and I've been remembering almost every dream since that night, and that was like a week and a half ago, maybe something like that. Um, I had so I have had some spiritual warfare since then, and um, I've had a little interference, but for the most part, it has definitely worked. I had some really clear um, prophetic dreams. Um, excuse me. Um, also Acts two seventeen, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. God is not a liar. If it says it in his word, it's truth. And you should believe it. And if he says something to you, if you get a prophecy, you need to hold on to it. And keep believing until it comes to pass. Do not stop praying. Pray until you see change. Pray until something changes. Hold fast in your belief. You have to have faith. Faith is just the most, it's one of the most important aspects of your, of your faith. That's that's why it's called faith. (laughs) Anyways, um, I hope you guys have a good day. I'll be um, maybe post another video. I don't know. Sometime soon. Bye. Love ya.